Oh, it's gonna be a miracle if I don't end up getting hurt. 17 miles an hour, 18, uh, 19. Can we do it? Can we hit 20? Hold it, 19.2. <laughs> Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd from Halo RV. Um, not at Halo RV currently. Uh, got something a little different for you today. Um, I tend to pinch pennies until Lincoln squeals, and I've actually been accused of um, crawling in through my undershirts from the neck down because I wear them so long they get so stretched out for my big friggin' nugget going through these things, they get wore out. Which is why, when you see behind me, your eyes do not deceive you. Yes, that is a Huffy Sledgehammer 15 speed, uh, of which maybe five of the gears ever worked that I got when I was, I don't know, I was 10 years old. <laughs> and I keep hearing more and more about things like e-bikes. And I thought, you know what, maybe I should try one of those sometime. And I wanna give real quick, uh, at the start of this here, a special shout out to my friend Matt from Matt's RV Reviews for getting me in touch with the good people at Electric E-Bikes. Now. I am an e-bike novice, and I had been kind of looking into them. I know just enough to get myself uh, in trouble. And I tell you, I knew just about enough to turn myself into that dad who like pops a wheelie on a motorcycle that is for some reason parked in the living room and ends up smashing the house plant. When I first got on this thing and got it unboxed, I twisted the throttle a little bit and it jumped and I nearly smashed head first into the closet in the entry of our house. Now, um, I did the thing that every husband should do when you hear a near catastrophic sound when your wife hears a near catastrophic sound from the other room and she goes, what was that? And I said, nothing. And um, <laughs> thankfully broke nothing. Now I have taken it on a couple test rides since then and, and I do feel a little bit better getting around on this thing. But what we're gonna do here today is I'm gonna kinda walk you through, since this is my first time, I figure it might be one of your first times, which is why you're watching this. I'm gonna walk you through kind of like my impressions right from the initial unboxing uh, all the way up to the uh, the first ride and everything, um, which I discovered you need to check the air pressure and the tires when they ship. I'm pretty sure it probably said something like that in the owner's manual, but uh, being the guy that every guy is, <laughs> I didn't I didn't read nothing. <laughs> Let's get started. So funny story. I also forgot to tell my wife that this was coming, and uh, suddenly a giant heavy box shows up on the porch. And uh, she was like, well, what is going on here? So uh, here's a couple quick still photos I took kind of as I was unboxing this. What's really nice is there's not like a bunch of assembly required. It comes in a box. You do have to wrestle it out of the box a little bit, but it's packaged really nicely. If, if somebody decided they want to chuck this thing around or it got dropped in transit, I really was, was not worried about it being damaged. Now, obviously you don't want a forklift spiking it or something like that. But um, I will tell you, it was a bit heavy, and that is one of the main differences between these and a, uh, you know, the old trusty, literal rusty over here, which, I mean, we've been through some fun times, been caught in a couple rainstorms, but I, I, it feels like I, I'm really excited about this, really excited to step into the modern age. Now, they, this is a step-through model. They have black and white. They also have a traditional non-step-through model. Um, I, uh, I told the company, whatever you have, whatever you'd prefer people to see, send to me. I'm not picky. I'd really love the opportunity to, uh, to play with one of these things and let people know what I think. Now, real quick on that note, and I'm sorry if I jump around sometimes. I don't script anything. We're just going to let this adventure take us where it takes us. Um, company did send this to me. Absolutely. Uh, I am not a paid affiliate, however. Any of the reviews that I do, um, I, I do not accept, like, if, if uh, I leave you a link, and I'll leave you a link in the video description where you can find one of these off their shop if you like it. I, this thing's really, really fun, by the way. You're going to hang tight. This is a, a lot of fun. Um, the, uh, the fact, though, if you click that, if you choose to buy one, I'm not getting paid for it. I, I don't uh, take monetary payment in return for the things that we review here. Um, I, I feel that that could potentially cloud anything that we put out. I don't hold any judgment against anyone that does. There's some people certainly that make their living that way. I make my living a different way. This is just kind of an extra little side thing I do. So you know that everything that you're hearing today is 100% unfiltered, unbiased, my true, genuine opinion on this thing. That being said, it's it's pretty positive. There's a couple points of concern I'm gonna point out uh, uh, along the way as we go though. Now, a couple things I noticed on this, and again, using the old bike back there as a reference point, 
Uh, look at the tires. You see how much thicker and fatter they are. I noticed as I zip through some gravel and stuff, this handled it very well. So if you're in some loose gravel terrain, maybe if it's a decent packed beach situation, you might be able to do some, uh, a little bit of dirt cruising. It's not a dirt bike, obviously, you know. Um, one of the other things that really kind of stood out to me on this one is that it is a, I don't know the technical term because I'm not an e-bike expert, but like almost like a hybrid style drive where it is pedal and you have a pedal assist or you can straight motorized over that if you are uh, so inclined. Um, that is one of the things I really wanted in an e-bike. I still wanted to be able to, to pedal a little bit, but one of the things I really enjoy about this is that it has um, variable pedal assist functions where uh, you can basically tell the motor, I want you to assist me more or less, depending on how you know much of the actual pedal bike experience you prefer versus how much of just a, uh, a little cruise experience that you have. The, uh, the position of the kickstand is just very natural and organic. You just flip back with your left foot. And you can flick it down real easy. It doesn't really, like, I never had to really look for it. It just always felt like it was right there. And what we're looking at here is the standard seat arrangement. Um, I actually also got one of the, uh, they call it the giant seat, the big padded shock dampening seat. And uh, my bony butt is probably going to like that thing. But we're going to start with this for now, and then we're going to do a little bit of an A-B uh, comparison. The handy dandy little headlight up here is something that um, I haven't had a chance to use in the evening hours. We're not going to be able to display that today. But if it doesn't quite put out what you're looking for, there are a variety of like handlebar mounts for things like flashlights that you can get. Uh, like you got one of those military atomic flashlights that can start a fire or something like that. You could mount that right up here. Now, uh, let me kind of run you through all the stuff. Uh, I uh, Obviously, you can see electric phone mount included here. And this over here is our gear shift. So just, you know, like any multi-speed bike, if you, uh, you know, want to pedal a little more and go a little slower to power up a hill or something like that, you can. Um, if uh, th this is our uh, pedal assist up down select here, you hold the power button to kind of turn it on. You'll see the uh, screen come to life over here. And as you hit the plus or minus button, you actually see the, uh, the pedal assist value go up and down. And I tell you what, um, I really found that much more than two on an assist and the bike was doing all the work and is uh, pedaling was really no different than using the half twist throttle over here, which you're noticing I'm playing with that, but it's obviously not taking off like I, uh, I described earlier. The kickstand actually really acts as a, uh, a kill switch. So you can have it turned on, the battery on, but until that kickstand comes up, the motor, the drive is not engaged, which is nice so that you don't accidentally drag that thing or, you know, just like I was doing right there, somebody's like, oh, what's this here? And they and they twist the throttle knowingly or unknowingly and end up smashing up your very nice bike. Now, speaking of which, um, again, it's heavy, but that's because look at this thing. It's got a box tube steel frame, basically. Uh, in the in the main housing, everything else obviously uh, you know tube steel here. It is heavy duty. It is seriously groovy, baby, as Austin Powers would say. And then one other thing I noticed on a quick little test ride, and we're about to get going. Apologies, I'm just kind of walking you through my experience as I first looked at this thing here. Is the extra wide platform here on these? I found myself just kind of resting my hands a little bit. It's so natural. It's so organic. It just feels so right to me so what do you say we uh we hit the road and we go flying into the danger zone then again i uh probably don't have the rights to use that song um never mind we'll we'll, we'll cruise into the uh not so dangerous zone <laughs> Okay, so a couple things. I've always in my entire life been weirdly unstable on a bike. So if the camera work gets a little wacky, remember I'm riding a bike with one hand, holding a camera with the other. I have no idea what an e-bike review is supposed to look like. I'm just, I'm just doing stuff, you know, man. So anyway, we're riding along here. We're pedaling. Um, the uh, twist throttle remembers on the right hand side with the gear shift. So none of that's going to be happening right now. And I'm almost falling over because I'm looking down. We're going about six miles an hour. And you can change that to kilometers per hour or you know bullets per cheeseburger whatever measurement i think you prefer but um the uh thing if you look it says pedal assist is zero that means that everything that we're doing right now is manual power and i'm going to do my best not to run over this nice lady hello ma'am we're live on candid camera um <laughs> 
and uh, I'm going to actually bump up the pedal assist here to pedal assist one. And immediately, like, it doesn't really feel uh, like, like visibly any different, but you see how the speedometer picked up. What happens, I think, at pedal assist one is the bike is now compensating for its own weight. So instead of you pedaling an extra 70 pounds below you here, the bike's like, okay, I'll carry my own weight. You just carry yourself and you select, you know, gears one through seven, whatever works better for you. Now, where this gets a little interesting is when we bump it up to pedal assist two and all of a sudden here, it like, whoa, kicks right below me. Now, pedal assist two and above, becomes kind of interesting because at that point the bike is whoa more than compensating for itself and if you stop pedaling it stops driving uh, and uh, when you start pedaling you'll get about one one and a half pedals in and then the motor kicks in so there's a bit of a delay here there's a bit of an odd period where all of a sudden it jumps and uh, if you start pedaling really hard you can start like being the manual pusher again but for the most part even on pedal assist 2 it's doing all the work now uh <laughs> let's open this sucker up and see what we can do shall we and like i said this i'm gonna do pure twist throttle um i have no idea if the wind's gonna eat up the microphone apologies i'm gonna try not to kill myself here we go i think the best i can do since i can't point the camera down is call out the speed so uh bear with me i think you get an idea based on the background scenery of what's happening here Okay, so starting at like, you know, four mile an hour here, grabbing the twist throttle, here we go. Oh, it's gonna be a miracle if I don't end up getting hurt. And there's oncoming cars. 17 miles an hour, 18, uh, 19, can we do it? Can we hit 20? Oh, we're starting to go uphill. Hold it, 19.2. <laughs> well, in case you're wondering, the hat survived. Uh, the oncoming vehicle uh, when my hat went flying uh, probably found it far less funny than I did but thankfully uh, you know nobody's hurt <laughs> this is why women live longer than men <laughs> okay so I mentioned how uh, I, I got a better seat to go with this or at least a bigger one it turns out it is way better so that's the factory standard seat right here and there's nothing wrong with it it's not bad but this is the giant seat, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why they call it that. Now, it has far more of a, uh, a shock bouncing quality, and just a wider footprint, even with my skinny bony butt, was definitely welcome. I could certainly see that being uh, something where different people would really appreciate that. Um, now, a couple interesting points uh, on this thing right here. It, uh, up front, again, for ride and handling, it has a uh, like a variable front suspension. Depending on how you twist this is how smooth or how, uh, you know, stiff that uh, suspension will be. And you can actually see the little, the little lubrication lines on there where it has, you know, been running in and out a little bit. Uh, that is just from the little bit of running around the, the local park that I've done here. Now again, obviously, I, I haven't been able to test the uh, the front headlight on here. Um, it, if it doesn't work again, I've got a uh, one of those crazy military-grade handlebar mount things I can do. And there are some other accessories. There's different mounting points on the chassis. And, I mean, you can see, again, the uh, just the, the heavy-dutiness of everything on here. You've got front rear disc brakes. It stops pretty good, which is great when you're going 20 mile an hour because you don't realize it. You will easily clip along faster, more easily than a conventional bicycle with this thing. But one of the points of concern that I kind of discovered is I don't know why it is, but when I just start cruising on a bicycle, I seem to stage my right leg up and my left leg down. Leg down. Maybe that's because I'm right hand dominant. I don't know. But this does ride a little bit lower. So when you are just cruising and not pedaling, you almost kind of want to make sure or uh, that, that your legs are, are your, your feet pegs here, as it were, your pedals. Oh my Lord, I can't speak. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, they're flat like this because if you start taking a sharp leaning left-hand turn, I did find that I would scrape the ground a little bit with that pedal if it was down. It wasn't bad. It wasn't enough to chuck me off the bike or anything, but I did kind of skid it a little bit. And then you see uh, this guy right here. That is actually a lock 
that uh, when this thing's kind of folded up, you can make sure it doesn't go running off anywhere effectively. This over here is our little charge point. And down below this is the uh, the key point for the, uh, the battery. I am uh, not, er, oops, no, sorry, there it is, right there. I am not, <laughs> I am not proud to admit how much time I spent walking around this thing with a key, trying to figure out where the key hooked up into it um, before I, I will admit, I finally broke down and looked at the instruction manual and it's actually blatantly obvious, hey, dummy, here's where the key goes. But you know, we usually do things like RV reviews and tips and things like that, so why am I talking about e-bikes here? Well, there's a ton of people that take these things camping. This is a folding e-bike. Uh, which not all of them are. And what's really cool about that is how it allows you to load this thing up into, say, a smaller vehicle, like my uh, Kia Soul muscle car, you know, uh, anyway, and uh, or cargo spaces in different RVs. So if you hang with me as we go through this, I'll actually show you several, several different ways that you'll be able to uh, bring this thing along different places you could put it different examples and maybe how it could work with your existing camper or potentially something you could think about if you're looking at your next one well everything kind of gets in on the action a little bit and some things like all of this like you know folding those steps even with one hand eventually you get used to it but it, it's when it's all new at first it's all kind of a foreign motion you get kind of used to it now this is the main bike folding lock I'm unable to do that one-handed apologies but that right there, uh, that's what kind of latches the whole thing together. And that does the lion's share of the work, but we still got some stuff that kind of sticks up out of the way here, specifically like the handlebars. Uh, there is yet another folding lock right here for that, which I thought was one of the most brilliant aspects of this design. That way, you don't constantly have to take, uh, you know, the handlebars on and off and readjust their height or anything like that. Um, although, that being said, to get this into my little car over there, I am probably going to have to take the seat off, but it's not that big a deal because, as you can see, another handy little clamp down there. But I found out I didn't even have to take the seat off to get it squished back here. Now, if you're looking, I still have the back seat flipped up. I have just a small hatch space back here, and this bike is occupying every available square inch. But nothing is smashed, nothing is getting crushed, everything fits, and the door still closes. Well, you know, like I said earlier, uh, most of what we do here is RV and camping related. So why am I talking about e-bikes today? Um, maybe it's been there, uh, but or maybe I'm just stumbling into it. I don't know. But there's definitely a cross section, I think, between the RV community and the e-bike community. And it's not to say the one naturally goes with the other, but there's definitely a connection you know they're both outdoorsy they're get out of the house they're get away from your daily grind kind of things disconnect a little bit have a little bit of fun and they really just kind of felt like they go hand in hand so the trick is again this thing's you know about 7,500 pounds it could be a little bit bulky although I did manage to stuff it in the back of my hamster car there so how can you take it with you camping where could you stuff it in one of these things I actually just want to run around the lot basically at random open some doors Let's see where we can fit these things. And I mean, the first and most obvious answer is, I think, of course, a toy hauler. And uh, it, it's kind of a no-brainer that this is, it's going to fit in one of these things. But how does it, how, how is it for loading, you know? That's what I want to look at on these. So, I mean, there's no question about it. You can definitely just walk this thing right up the ramp and load it in there. And that is actually one of the times where I think the uh, the walking assist feature on this is really nice. When you're going up those kind of hefty inclines, uh, the motor can engage a little bit to kind of help, again, carry the weight of the bike itself. So you're kind of just rolling it. It's sort of a, you know, a, a, a mutual action, as it were, instead of you doing all the work. But I was kind of wondering, can you just ride it up there? <laughs> and what I kind of found is you could, if you had a bit of a running start, but I don't really recommend that. Um, just because the angle of attack on most toy haulers, it is pretty much a steep incline there. I do really recommend walking the bike up. Not to mention, uh, if you are going fast enough that you can just straight cruise right up this thing, 
That means you're going a little too fast by the time you get into a small garage space, and then once again, you end up being like that dad on America's Funniest Home Videos who crashes into the house plant, but at least then you have a chance of winning $10,000 on America's Funniest Home Videos. Just remember, always hit record. But I got to thinking, what about people who don't have toy haulers, like me? Frankly, most people with RVs don't have toy haulers. What if you have something a little more traditional? Are there places where you could still put one of these? And I don't know. Let's find out. So something that's really started in the last couple seasons here is more and more RVs are being made with large, easily accessible outdoor compartments like this Cougar right here. Now, sometimes their sizes can vary a little bit, so we're going to try a couple on for size like a pair of pants and see how they fit. Sure, it fits in one of those bigger trailers with the bigger cargo doors, but you know what's really common? These little like 20 foot trailers with like a cargo bunkhouse door? Is it gonna fit in one of those things? Let's find out. Well, it turns out not only does it fit in here, it fits in here with room to spare. I was really kind of worried about the width, but the way this all folds down, look at this. Uh, it, actually, there's enough room you for sure want to make sure you do something to, to strap it down so it's not jiggle banging all over the place and frankly i'm not convinced you couldn't fit two of them in there all right so we're three for three but what about the really really little trailers that don't have near as wide of a rear cargo door well Now, what I found is I was basically able to load this into virtually anything, whether it was through a rear cargo door, uh, or even if like you don't have something with a cargo door, like if you have something with a uh, like a super slide, when it closes, I found that I was basically able to uh, set the bike inside the RV when it was closed up going down the road. Now, obviously you wanna do some things like, you know, add some padding on either side or strap it down somehow, like maybe tie it against a couch so it doesn't bang around all over the place. You don't wanna smash up your shifter or your fenders or something like that. But overall, I, I was really nervous about how this part of the video was going to go. I thought this thing was gonna be fun to haul around. It is definitely a little weighty. It, it takes a little bit of sweat equity to get it loaded sometimes. But the fact is, once you get there, you're cruising around, this, is a lot of fun and uh th there was only one trailer that had too thin of a cargo door that i wasn't able to get it loaded into so it, it's it's one of those things where sometimes when people come and look at bunk houses they'll actually bring their kids if you're going to come look at an rv and you have one of these you may actually want to bring it with you to see where you can get it loaded into i know i certainly wouldn't have a problem with that here i think any reasonable place would be like heck yeah let's make sure we're finding the right rv overall i mean i'm just I'm, I'm really happy and really impressed with how portable it was. The folding nature of this thing really compacts down, and it was really surprising the people inside, too. They came out and said, hey, nice scooter. And they started playing with it and showing them all the stuff. They're like, oh, wow. Oh, wow, this is, like, really quite the machine. I'm like, I know. These are awesome. So a final recap. The things that I really found I enjoyed on this and uh, a couple of the things that maybe I disliked or surprised me or things I think you just need to be aware of. Uh, the first of which is the fact that, again, it is kind of bulky it has a decent amount of weight to it when you're riding it you don't really notice that but when you are loading it when you're storing it it is something that you need to consider um again when i was riding around i found that um at least on this step through model maybe it's not true of the uh the uh, i don't know the straight frame varieties i don't know bike terms like that um the the non-step throughs like i have here uh, I found that if uh, you know I had one of my feet resting in the down position on the, the the pedal cycle and I leaned into a turn, I could kind of scuff my feet a little bit. Now it never caused me to go ace deuce and take a digger or anything like that, but it's just something to be aware of. And really, that's just one of those things when you're cruising, you just keep your feet flat and it becomes a non-issue for the most part. Now um, I also have a weird habit of when I pedal, I point my toes like down. I don't know why. I just I've, I've always done that. Maybe it's normal. Maybe it's not. So I, a couple times I did scuff the to uh, toes of my shoes. So if you got some nice sneakers, you might not want to do that. You might want to get some bike riding sneakers. But uh, short of that, um, the only thing that really surprised me about it, um, 
was the lack of like a USB plug. And I don't know why that surprises me, but it just feels like you've got electricity all over the place. They make phone holders. It just feels like I almost want to be able just to plug my phone in. And uh, <laughs> like, if you know me, I, I'm, I'm called Josh Yarviner. The nerd part is truly early. Like I'm a Pokemon Go nerd too. You know, I just hit level 44 this morning, baby. But um, <laughs> uh, running around, I was like, well, okay, well, I'd have to bring, if I want to go for a long trip, maybe a separate battery pack uh, to keep my phone up and running. Or if you're going to take a long ride and you're GPSing around and you're going to use that to get back home, that might be something you want, is that extra juice capacity. But at the same time, this isn't made to be rain-proof. It's made to be highly rain-resistant. You do want to try to keep it dry. You know, it's an electric thing. You want to keep it dry. And there's folds, and it's not exactly 100% sealed. I think that it's just logical to say that. So maybe one more electrical-based plug on this thing up on the handlebars in an area that maybe could have more water exposure doesn't exactly fit into that. So I don't... I, I'm not dinging the product for lacking a simple USB plug. I was just a little surprised to see that. Maybe in the uh, XP3 system or whatever, they'll come up with something like that. I don't know, just an idea. But that's that's really about the only little basic hangups that I had with this thing. In terms of the stuff I like about it, again, starting right here, and just the fact it is shockingly compact given the size of it. If you refer, it seems like forever ago now, uh, back to the start of this video when I said my wife looked at it and said, holy cow, it's the size of a motorcycle. I was like, I, I don't know how well this is actually going to integrate into the uh, common RV world. And then when I brought it here and I started stuffing it in things, I was, I was shocked positively. So in how transportable it really was. Um, and you know, I obviously like what do you enjoy about it? Like the, the drive feature, the easy cruise feature, but something I did yesterday um, in between recording segments here is probably my favorite thing with this. And that is when I was younger, uh, going bike rides with your dad. That's what you do when you're a kid now, uh, you know, and now, I'm, you know, I'm the dad, I'm older and I go on bike rides with my daughter. But my dad has a, a smaller electric drive only little scooter style e-bike, if you will. And um, I thought about this, and like he's got wicked bad emphysema uh, from smoking for a lot of years. Now I'm referring to my father, not Mr. Halet. I have, well, three dads, I'm very fortunate that way, but my genetic father, as it were, he smoked for a number of years and he just can't ride bikes around anymore. But he's got this little electric scooter and sometimes we've taken rides. And we had just before, like you can see the leaves turning, just before the weather got really cold and crappy, I invited him over yesterday for his birthday and we went on a father-son bike ride. and. Guys, it was uh, it was the highlight of my weekend. I'm almost getting emotional here, just thinking about all those fun times with my dad I've had, you know. And this allowed me to reconnect to that. And maybe it's because I've got the emotional member berries content invested into this. I will. Uh, it's something I just want to be able to continue to share with him for a long time. And it gave me a chance to do something with my dad I hadn't been able to do in a long time. And that uh, that was that was really special for me. But um, the, uh, the height of, oh gosh, that's another thing. I'm a tall, lanky, dad bod dude. A lot of bikes, like I just go to Walmart and I get a bike and they hurt. They don't fit my, my, my profile, my stature. Um, you know, like I, I end up leaning forward too far. Uh, my friend, Mr. Joshua Sheehan from Gander Flight actually had a video about that showing people, here's how you should actually adjust a bicycle so that you're not wearing your back out. This has serious height adjustment on the seat, serious height adjustment on the handlebars, and it felt so much more comfortable and ergonomic to me. I love that. The big pads on the handlebars where you can just kind of rest your hand when you're going down the road. And I was afraid when I first started looking at it, all the controls looked a little bit intimidating to me. But when you get in there, when you're riding, it makes sense. Everything is just a thumb click away. Everything is simple. The big bright backlit display that's on that thing that you can see even if it's the evening or the twilight hours. So you're never like, how much? You can be in the middle, you can be riding at midnight and you can look down and clearly see how much juice you have left. And that's another thing. My dad's bike is electric drive only. You can always pedal this sucker. And, and it's frankly not that much harder than a conventional bike, even despite the weight. Once you get moving, the weight kind of takes care of itself. But where it was also really nice is um, 
it's got I found out it's got a powerful motor again riding around with my dad he's got a more basic uh, kind of bike and his goes about 10 12 miles an hour this thing cooked right past him and I was able just to cruise up hills without even breaking a sweat some pretty steep grades frankly but his bike just couldn't do it he had uh, uh, <laughs> he had to look like the Flintstones with his little feet pedaling next to this thing like he was doing some weird kind of e-bike gallop <laughs> and I didn't have to do that these bikes are not the cheapest e-bikes I've seen. And again, I am not an e-bike expert. I apologize for bouncing around so much. I don't have a regular format here. This isn't uh, something that we've really done a lot of in the past. But I, 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 uh, I'm very impressed with what I see. I see the value, the, the construction of this thing. Yeah, it's a little heavy, but man, it ain't, it ain't gonna fall apart on you. That's a fact. So. Overall, I'm very, very impressed with it. But again, I am not an e-bike expert, and I really highly recommend, um, you know, do some do some more looking, do some more learning. Um, and uh, again, like I said uh, earlier in this video, shout out to Matt for Matt's RV Reviews. He's touched one of these too, and he's kind of the guy that got me in touch with these guys. Um, so maybe he's touched on some things that I didn't think about. Maybe that would help give you some more information if you check that video out too. And if you would like to learn more about these, the different accessories, uh, you know, the pricing that's available, I will leave you a link in the video description where you can check those out and again I'm not a paid affiliate if you click on that and you buy something I don't get a cut of that I'm just sharing that as a uh, a little bit of a, uh, a courtesy so it's easier for you to track these things down overall I'm a fan I'm a fan I really really like this and here's the big question I think if something happened to it and uh, I had to get another one would I do it yeah yeah I would and again, maybe it's because I got that emotional content from that bike ride lined up with my dad, but I'd do this, I, I, would, I would do this again in a heartbeat. Now that I've had one, now that I've learned about it, I'm really excited to continue to go out and have some more adventures and, and run around and have some more fun. So if you appreciate the, uh, the information that we've done today, something a little different, leave me a comment, hit the like button on the video, and subscribe if you haven't, and let me know, would you like to see more things like this, and what sorts of things would you like to see? I can't make you a promise but maybe we'll be able to, to flesh a couple of those out. So as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.